So, today uh, in today's lecture I will uh, uh, start a new section on direct sums. and projections. Before we start formally, I would like to motivate little bit. Um, uh, direct sums uh, is a concept uh, which will be which will play a very important role in the investigation of linear maps especially and it is also a generalization of a concept of basis that you will see in a minute and uh, the projections are special kinds of linear operators on a vector space. Uh, so, when I have enough uh, vocabulary uh, that I will say more about it. So, as usual we will say k is our field scalar field and v is k vector space. And what we are looking for is we want to break this vector space into smaller pieces and so that uh, linear operators on V can be restricted to those subspaces and that study will become easier. For, okay. So, this is the uh, crux of the matter. So, uh, I will recall first what we have done earlier and then uh, supported by examples how useful it is. So, le, uh, let u i be a family of k subspaces of v. Could be finitely many, could be infinitely many and so on. Now, remember we have defined the product on the product set Cartesian product set we have a vector space structure here which is component wise addition which is coming from ui and component wise scalar multiplication and the elements here we are denoting by i tuples ui i in i these are i tuples yeah. so and we have consider a subspace of this that we have called it direct sum, direct sum u i. This is a k subspace of this bigger one, precisely all those i tuples for which u i equal to 0 for almost all, all i in i. And this, this we have called a direct product. And these we have called direct sum of the family ui. This is also of ui. In general, they may not be equal, especially when i is infinite, then they are definitely not equal. Um, if if all of them are non zero and in finite case they will always be equal so if you have finitely many u1 to un subspaces then if you write like this direct sum that is same as the direct product because there is no condition on the tuples so in this case also we know their dimensions dimension of this will be precisely the sum of the dimension not only dimension you will also know the uh, basis. If you know basis of u1, basis of u2, basis of un, then you can putting together and by adding zeros to the other components, we will get a basis of this. So, this is what we have seen earlier. And another thing, another uh, construction we have seen. Another construction we have seen is for a family of subspaces ui, we have also uh, 
constructed a new subspace which is which we call it a sum sum of the family ui and by definition this was a k subspace smallest smallest k subspace which contain all uis and such a smallest subspace exist if i is non empty of course and that is denoted by this sum and it is, it is denoted by the sum notation because we can actually describe the elements of this this is precisely the set of all linear combinations ui where ui where is in ui for each i and also this tuple ui actually belong to uh, let me not write tuple because uh, with the condition ui equal to 0 for almost all i this condition is ensure that this sum makes sense in general and it is very easy to see that this actually a subspace it contains all the uis and it is the smallest one so therefore this equality here now it would be very nice it would be very nice if we uh, to compute a dimension of the sum for example even for uh, a sum of two subspaces we had to use uh, a dimension formula because that is uh, like inclusion exclusion principle in linear algebra. So, it is not quite easy for many subspaces how do we compute the dimension ok, but there definitely there is one nice linear map from a direct sum. to a sum what is the map any element here is a tuple ui i in i with the condition that almost all ui are 0. So, you can map this to the sum this makes sense and this map is obviously k linear map. Not only k linear, also it is uh, evidently it is surjective. Because any element of this sum, just now we noted any element of this sum is a sum like this, and that sum has only finitely many components could be non zero, and so it is coming from the corresponding tuple. So, if we can manage to compute the kernel then we could use rank theorem to decide what is the dimension of this and it would be also nice uh, if this is an isomorphism because if this is an isomorphism then this dimension will be equal to this dimension this dimension we know it is sum of the dimensions of the us and therefore this dimension we would know so it is interesting to note when i will characterize soon uh, characterization where this map is an isomorphism ok. So, that is the aim um, first few minutes I will characterize uh, the situation where such a map is an isomorphism ok. Uh, if it is an isomorphism, so let me also uh, use the terminology if this map if this map it is not obviously it is not always an isomorphism especially when the intersection. So, even for two subspaces where the intersection is non-zero then this map cannot be an isomorphism. If this map is an isomorphism then the sum space this 
is called then the sum space is called the direct sum. Uh, now to, to, to distinguish I will write here internal direct sum and we will write and usually denoted by sum and I will put that plus around circle that is like this ui. We will analyze when the sum is a direct sum soon. Uh, why do we call it internal? Because see all this is happening inside a vector space v. This is this sum is a subspace inside v with additional property that that above map is a isomorphism. That is the reason why one calls it a internal direct sum. Internal direct sum. In the other this notation, so for the same reason it is called external, similar reason, external direct sum of the family ui. But if, you, if one is careful, it will it is visible from the notation because we are using different notations, right? The it is called external because this is not happening inside V. It is happening inside the product space. So their vector space structures are different. So that is the reason it is called external direction. So let us see one example to I to illustrate this. This example will also illustrate that this concept is a generalized see, internal direct sum is an extension of the concept basis. So, that is what I want to illustrate in this example. So, V is a vector space. So, let x i i in i be a basis, be a k basis of a k vector space V. Then you look at the family ui. ui is a subspace generated by xi for each i. So, this ui is nothing but all mul scalar multiples of this fixed xi. So, they are a xi, a varies in the field k. This is one dimensional, a dimension of ui is exactly one for all i. And v in fact whole v is a direct sum of sum of direct uh, internal direct sum of all these k x s. This is clear because first of all v is a sum because every element of V is a uh, k-linear combination of these xi's because this is a basis and not only k-linear combination, such combination is also unique. The coefficients are uniquely determined and that will make that map to be an isomorphism. So, therefore, what we are looking for is we are looking for a decomposition of V. We are looking for a representation of V as direct sum like this direct not like this at least for not getting confused we should use this notation i in i u i. 
v equal to this, where u i is a family of k subspecies. u i may not be one dimensional, u i may be more dimensional, may not be infinite dimensional, but we want to break this f uh, v like this. And uh, how we choose u i, it will depend on the, uh, the linear operator that we want to study on v and what properties we would like to have. So, that uh, we can restrict to when we restrict to these subspecies u i, we can induct on the dimension and many such problems will become easier. So, uh, so that is that is the idea. So, when the, uh, as we go on uh, more and more um, of such uh, examples, I will keep uh, saying. So, in this case what, what does this, this direct sum decomposition means? This means v first of all there are two things, v should be the sum and every element of v because of this equality every element x in v is can be written as summation u i, i in i with the property that these u i's are almost all 0 for almost all indices i. But such an expression in general may not be unique and we want to insist now these u i are uniquely determined by x and u i are uniquely determined by x. This is precisely the condition of the, the map the natural map we have from the direct sum to the internal direct sum that map is injective. This is precisely the meaning of that. So, this will make this sum to be internal direct sum. So, that is the thing. Okay. And in this case if I know uh, in this case, so we can do more in this case if I choose a basis for each u i if uh, y y what do i call it y j y j as j varies in some indexing set i i is a base is a k basis of u i this is for each i in i for each subspace you choose a basis and put it together that means what you can see then then y j as j varies in the union, union of all these i i's and disjoint union i in i. This is a k basis of v. Because they do not, they will not intersect. Okay. So, this is, this is the main thing. So, uh, and uh, let me uh, let us first analyze what what happens. So, the first thing I want to note is the following. So, let us write it as a lemma. Lemma. If given vector space V is a direct sum of the subspaces finitely many u 1 to u n. And now I am going to drop internal and external it will be clear from my writing what I am talking. That is V equal to this i is from 1 to n. This means V is the sum and that is a direct sum. Then V is finite dimensional if and only if U1 to U n are finite dimensional.
and moreover dimension of V will be the sum of the dimensions. just above that I said. So, the proof is just uh, simple verification that you take the basis of each ui and put it together and that will be a basis of v. So, uh, this is precisely what we did in a, uh, when we proved the existence we proved that uh, in fact uis are one dimensional, but sometimes uh, there may not uh, we would like to have a decomposition of v in a direct sums, but with special other properties and that time one dimensional may not exist. For example, when you are looking for Eigen vectors, Eigen values that time it may not be one dimensional and then we will have to. So, this is where. Now, I am going to characterize when the sum is a direct sum that means, when that above the first map is a uh, isomorphism and especially the kernel injective. See, more important is injective, subjectivity is just uh, definition. Yeah. Okay. So, the characterization for a sum to be a direct sum. this is what we are talking. That means, if I given a family u i i in i family of k subspaces of v, then what we what I want to uh, say is when then when the sum is a direct sum. How does one test it uh, easily? Because to check some map is injective, we have to find a economical way to test when the map is injective that, that uh, the, the given map. Uh, so, the, let us write this in the form of theorem. that is uh, we are asking when is this equal to this. Okay. So, with the same notation as above the following are equivalent. Number 1 the sum is direct is direct. So, that is in the writing the sum equal to this. Two, For every u element u in the sum there exist unique elements u i in u i almost all of them 0 with u equal to summation u i. See every element has such expression that is no big deal, but what is more important is unique. Okay, third one or let me call it 2 prime. If summation u i 0, 
where with ui's elements in ui for each i and ui is a zero for almost all then each ui is zero similar to linear independence this is two prime and third for every j in i uj intersection the remaining sum i in i and i is not j u g u i this has to be zero you remember for two subspaces we have defined the sum u plus w is a direct if intersection u intersection w is zero this is similar to that for, for two it is matching with this so let us prove this so proof Uh, one, if and only if two, if and only if two prime. This is easy from definitions. Now uh, I will indicate the proof. Um, two prime. So we will prove. Uh, two prime, if and only if three, and that will make equivalence complete. So first, let us prove two prime implies three. That means we have given that uh, if some sum is zero with each u i in u i and u i zero for almost all, then each u i is zero. Then I want to prove that this intersection is zero. So take somebody common elements here. So let x belong to U intersection i in i, i minus j. Let me write it U i and j is fixed. J in i, j in i is fixed. Then we want to prove. This is what we want to prove that x is zero. By assuming two prime, well, x is here means what? X is here means first of all, x is in this sum, so x will have expression summation u uh, i i in i minus j, and almost all all i s. Oh, I forgot here j. Almost all i, for almost all i, u i is a zero, so that this sum makes sense. On the other hand, this is also in u j because it's in the intersection. So that means uh, I can call it u j. Let's call it u j, and shift this to the other side. Then what do we get? We will get summation. U i now I can write i in i because this j I have added there with the minus if you like, but if u j is in u j then minus u j is also in u j and then this sum is zero with the property that almost all of them are zero because at most I have added this u j almost all are zero and the sum no no two prime say that if the sum is zero then all of them are zero so that will imply U i equal to zero for all i. In particular, for i equal to j, for i equal to j, x is u j and that is also zero. So that means we have proved x is zero. So uh, this is I will I will write here if if more. This this part is slightly. Invisible. So I read if the sum u i is zero, 
by 2 prime all u i's are 0. In particular x which was u j that will also be 0 that is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so, that proves 2 prime implies 3. Now, let us prove the converse 3 implies 2 prime. Now, we have given 3 that is what is given is given for all j in i u j intersection the remaining sum this is 0 that is given for each j and we want to prove that the sums and what do you want to prove? Want to prove if the sum is 0 sum of u i is 0 obviously, we have a property that u i belong to u i and almost all of them are u i's are 0. Then I want to prove each one of them is 0. Okay. So, fix a j in i. Then I want to prove u j here is 0. So, I will keep that u j on one side and remaining guys I will shift to the other side. So, what will we get? Then we will get u j equal to minus u i i in i minus j this this equality because I shifted, but this is same as summation i in i minus j minus u i. And this guy if u i are in u then this guy is also in u i. But that means on one side this belong to u j on the other side this sum belongs to the remaining ones. So, this element is in the intersection. But uh, we have given that for each j this is 0 this is by 2 prime by 3 assumption. So, u j must be 0. So, that implies u j is 0 and that is true for all. So, that proves 3. So, that implies 3. So, we have proved that the, the to, to test some sum is a direct or not we have to test for each subspace intersection with the remaining sum should be a 0 subspace. Okay. So, we will stop and continue after the break.